Um, so like with all the SEO assignments, it has attached uh, videos that are meant to be helpful, meant to be useful. Um, we won't watch it through them all or even any of them because they are kind of long and we don't really have time to, <laughs> um, uh, time to <laughs> play through all of them. Um, what I want to highlight are that um, how some of the, these videos are useful and to make sure that you know that uh, some of the descriptions you will see here are uh, more decorative or more kind of I hope you find it interesting but if you don't don't worry about it kind of deal and um, these, you know some of this video I think looks at like a design of the cone and all that very interesting engineering detail, but you know, kind of fundamental conceptual physics way, it doesn't matter too much. <laughs> like going from subsonic to supersonic flow, that's interesting. But um, in terms of answering the physics question down here, it won't really matter. Uh, so really for question one, um, you know, I say the first video gives a little hint to be the reference to mass and um, and uh, as you watch through this five minute video, you will see it at some later point here when it talks about the actual the multi multi stage aspect of the uh, rocket. So it talks about the uh, it talks about the separation of the earlier stage in the later stage of the rocket, and there's a reference to the mass there. And I, I guess what I want to encourage you to think about is a lot of this question, um, this question one here in multi-stage chemical rockets, earlier stages uh, are separated from the later stages after the fuel is exhausted. And, you know, it says in terms of Newton's laws, um, that's one of the options and, you know, it's and or. So if you have just one that you understand then you can base your answer on that. Um, or if you want to do all three, you can also do that. Um, and I want to encourage you to think in terms of Newton's laws first, because um, um, with the change in mass that the video references, you actually have enough information to how, uh, when you think about Newton's laws, particularly Newton's second law, that force is equal to mass times acceleration, how uh, losing mass could be advantageous when you're trying to get a rocket up into the orbit. And, um, and the kind of argument you can make with the Newton's laws, you can find basically the exact version with the impulse and momentum that kind of goes with the intimate relationship between uh, Newton's laws and the change of momentum <laughs> that I covered earlier today. And um, so, so there's a, that, so it's kind of both of those consideration are basically two different versions of the same thing. With the conservation of energy, it's a little bit, um, I think that's probably the one that's the most challenging way to look at. Um, you kind of have to think in terms of, um, in terms of potential energy and uh, how it takes energy to, so, you know, we on earth are kind of in a gravity well, we are at a lower point on gravity. It takes energy to lift to something to a higher point. And um, again, he, he, even in this consideration, it goes back to how as a mass of some object the changes, uh, how that makes it easier to, uh, how I guess with a given amount of energy, you can put it to a higher height. And so, so uh, I, you know, th these questions, it, um, so in this assignment, I'm asking you to answer both questions, but in the previous assignment, you've seen how instructions that ask you to focus on, uh, ask you to select what question you want to answer. And in this one question, it's kind of built that way because uh, you don't have to base your answer on all three ideas. Um, I would uh, much rather that you base your answer on something that makes a sense to you and uh, kind of build on that you are um, better foundation of understanding. And if it's something doesn't make immediate sense at this point, don't worry too much about it. I would uh, much rather you think about it, uh, think about which of these three approaches make sense to you and, um, and go with it.
So that's the first question. The second question deals with the ion engine, and there are actually two videos here. Um, there's a video here and video here. And I think I gave you two videos because um, kind of like I didn't like both. <laughs> I did. Both the videos had some things that I liked about it, some things I didn't like about it. I think with this video, what I didn't really like about it was just uh, uh, just how short it was. <laughs> so there are something. So there were some things here that it didn't quite. It left unexplained. Um, so there's that. <laughs> um, you should watch it still. Um, and the second video, I liked it better. It uh, it gives a more detailed explanation. But then there were some things that uh, I didn't like. But that's more of a me nitpicking. I think there were some. Um, so I, I think um, um, in the remaining two, three minutes, um, kind of a hint, guidance that I can give that um, might be most useful uh, without just entirely giving away the answer is to focus on this idea of efficiency because efficiency is something that kind of depends on context on how you define it. Um, in fact, when we do thermodynamics, <laughs> you will hear that word again, efficiency, and how we define efficiency in thermodynamics is different from the sense of efficiency in this question here. So, um, and, and you know, and the question itself says, uh, explain in terms of conservation momentum, why that is, um, and explain as necessary what efficiency here is referring to. And this is a good place to mention the general idea behind efficiency, because all the different description of efficiency that you will see in this class, it boils it down to this uh, basic idea. Um, efficiency is really referring to uh, what we get, or I guess more better description of uh, what we want some quantity that we want divided by uh, what we quote unquote pay. And so you can think of what we want as the end goal of whatever that activity is. And what we pay is some kind of a limited resource that we don't have infinitely of that we have to give up in order to get what we want. So in the context of rocket propulsion or rocket engines, I think you can describe what we want as being propulsion, the movement of the rocket. So it'll be, so you can think about how you quantify it and it'll uh, tie in some sense of the, with the movement of spacecraft. That's what we are trying to accomplish and all the different methods, chemical engines and ion engines, they amount to different ways of um, getting a spacecraft to move. Um, and I think what, uh, what takes a more longer physical consideration to fully understand is what we pay, what we are giving up in the context of rocket propulsion. Because I think they are actually good candidate for what we pay, uh, what we are giving up in order to get rocket propulsion. Let me just give you a few uh, possible considerations um, without saying that any, well, without saying that all of them are what we pay, there would be a literal sense of what we pay, money, <laughs> involved in building the rocket. Um, there's a, a common sense of what we pay, uh, which could be energy. And um, um, in this context, it doesn't turn out to be that, but energy is very often uh, 
a, a form of what we pay. In this context, it doesn't turn out to be. And I guess uh, um, I think what's useful here to is to consider um, what kind of resources really limited for a rocket. So energy, in some sense. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be limited for a rocket. Like we have spacecrafts that we launched three decades ago that are still on operation. They still have somehow energy source to operate out of. Um, spacecrafts can get energy from solar uh, energy. They can have energy in the form of um, nuclear reactor. So energy in some sense is not, um, it's not the most expensive thing for a rocket. And for a rocket in a vast vacuum of space, um, what ends up being very limited is actually mass. Amount of mass that can be put on a rocket is limited. In fact, especially if you are thinking of a rocket that's moving around in the solar system. So at first it escapes the gravity of Earth and then it goes somewhere because for every gram of mass that we put into the orbit, there was a lot more that we had to put into fuel, to put into multi-stage stage chemical rocket to get that small amount of mass uh, into orbit. So mass is what's a, a limiting quantity for a rocket. So, um, and um, if you, as you watch the description of ion engine, you will see how the, Ions are ejected with very, um, very high velocity, and that allows you to get more propulsion out using smaller mass of ions. And um, and yeah, and you know, in your answer, you'll have to expand on that. You can just uh, give the single sentence answer, <laughs> but but do um, pay attention to that as you are watching through these uh, videos, so that um, so that <laughs> that uh, makes sense. Oh, I remembered what I didn't like about this video, which is more of a kind of nitpicking thing for me, but let me find it and just tell you that that's, that particular statement that you will see in this video is wrong. So that you will, one, I don't like this reference to science fiction, especially when most science fiction is soft sci-fi and but that's not the thing that I am actually uh, taking issue with. What I'm taking issue with, I uh, hear this. Once you've got ions, you can direct them. It's not the magnetic field that's accelerating it. Uh, the acceleration of ions are done with the electric field. Uh, magnetic field, I don't know if ion engines actually use it. If they did, they would be using it for changing direction of movement of ion. But in terms of pushing out the ions, it's gonna be done with the electric field. So. You know, but that's more of a me nitpicking. Uh, uh, we haven't talked about electricity and magnetism yet. So as far as your answer goes, uh, whatever mechanism it is, uh, ex accelerating ions, uh, that's not what our focus is. It's the mechanics. It's the, uh, the momentum and energy stuff that we are concerned with at the moment. 